Have you ever been trying to do a job, but you didn't have the right tool for the job, right? You're working at it, you're trying to get it done, and you just can't complete it because you need one special tool and you don't have it. Recently at the boys' birthday party a few months ago, we was trying to set up to blow up the balloons. Well, we didn't have the right pair of pliers to put the fitting on to use the air compressor to blow everything up for us. And it was a mess, and we fought with it. We tried everything we had, and we, we went to different tools that we had, and then finally we was like, just go buy a pair of pliers. We'll have to have a pair of pliers to get it done. We had to have the right tool for the job. Hi, I'm Shauna, and this is my husband, Pete. We're Galahee Family Discipleship. We are inviting you into our home. Come and study the Bible with us. We believe that discipling yourself and your family through the Word of God, the reading of the Word of, the Word of God, is an essential part in a Christian's walk. Uh, we are continuing our study on the book of Jude. I, w I'm going to read the verse uh, 20 and 21, and then we'll get started with the discussion. And it says, But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Okay, so here Jude tells us to uh, continually be praying to the Lord in the Spirit, right? And, you know, we are Pentecostals, so we believe in a prayer language. We believe the Holy Spirit speaks through you. We believe that it gives you the words to say when you have no other words to say. But regardless of how you believe or what your denomination is, we want you to know that the Holy Spirit should be guiding your prayer life. He is the right tool for the job. If if you're not having God guide guide <laughs> guide and direct your prayer life, you're doing it wrong. Right, because you're praying according to your will instead of his will. You know, like uh, we mentioned in the blog on Friday, uh, the unknown tongue is mentioned in Romans in chapter 8, in Corinthians uh, chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and 1 Corinthians, uh, in Ephesians chapter 6. All these things that talk about that prayer language that um, God has given us, and it is a measure of the Holy Spirit. Right. So whenever we pray, we don't want to pray our will, right? We want to pray God's will. And when the Holy Spirit's involved, that's guaranteed to happen. Uh, whenever you, you go into your prayer closet, hopefully you're asking God, you know, the, uh, what is your will in this situation, God? I, I want this to be done, but your will be done over mine. Just as Jesus prayed in the garden, right? You know what? Hey, if this is possible, let this cuff pass, but your will be done. Who better to know the right thing to do than God? And when God the Holy Spirit is praying through you, uh, then you are praying for God's will in that situation and over your life. And uh, like it says, it builds up a most holy faith you know, until Christ returns because he is coming back. Mm -hmm. And we need to be a people who are found faithful when he returns. We want to uh, please God and do the will of the Father and make sure that we are always in right standing with God. Right, and this is the perfect way to get rid of the selfish prayer life, right? Uh, because what we mostly do is pray for ourselves, we pray for our family, we pray for blessings upon us, right? But in this instance, whenever the Holy Spirit takes over, God knows exactly what needs to be done, what exactly needs to be prayed for. Uh, the he knows the strategic uh, plans of the enemy, he knows the devices that they choose to use, he knows the weapons that are trying to form against you. And uh, when the Holy Spirit is praying through you, uh, you directly deal with those things in the spiritual realm. We um, many times want the logical result. We want the natural result. And we don't understand uh, the measure of supernatural that must take place in every aspect of our life. And that is why we uh, need to trust God and allow God to uh, minister through us and minister to us, knowing that he has always has our best interest in heart and is going to never lead us down the wrong path. He's never going to uh, want something that would uh, destroy us. Uh, he wants everything to be encouraging and uplifting for us, knowing that he in, always in the end will work things out for us. Are good. Right. It's a trust issue. We have to trust him with it because mm -hmm. he will take care of it. Going forward, we'll remind you every day there's four things a disciple Jesus Christ will do. Exalt God, encounter God, edify yourself by reading the word of God, and engage this world for Jesus Christ. Until next time, God bless you.